Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be going over the formal definition of a limit. So this may also be referred to as the epsilon delta definition, and you guys will see why in just a minute. So I would actually like to say this is the most painful section of this chapter, and mainly because it has all these little letters here and there that make it kind of confusing. But if you do find yourself hating this section, don't worry, I totally understand. I personally hate it too, while your professor is there just sitting having a great time thinking you're loving it too. But I understand you don't, and we just have to get through it because it's covered in your course. So let's get started. So here we have the formal definition of a limit. So they give you like this giant paragraph with all this stuff in it, all these letters, and they just expect you to be like, yeah, it all makes sense. But guess what? We're going to go through it, just kind of break it down, and using the aid of this graph right here on the right, this graph right here on the right, we're going to make some sense out of it. So let's go ahead and start reading this paragraph. So here we have, let f of x be defined for all x in some open interval containing the letter a. So we're going to know we're going to have some open interval that we're going to contain our letter a. And letter a in this case is the x value that you're going to try to approach. So you see I see here in your limit, letter a is that x value that you're trying to approach. And if you also see it here in your graph, it is that x value that you're trying to get to. Right? And I tell you, with the possible exception that f of x need not to be defined at a. So not be defined, which is a fancy way of saying that it's going to have a little hole there. You guys see that? So at a, it doesn't actually need to be defined. So that possibly is there on the table. And surely we'll do an example where it is defined, and we'll do an example where it's not defined. So you guys can see the difference on how to compute these limits. So the next part says that we were right that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. So what we're trying to get is we're trying to approach a, which is the x value we have right here, and we're going to get l, which is right here, and that is the y value corresponding to your x value. Remember that limits are just y values corresponding to an x value. So here's where we're going to throw in the whole delta and epsilon, and then uh, epsilon into your definition. So here we have, if any given number epsilon greater than zero so we're just gonna have a positive we're gonna have a positive epsilon we can find the number delta greater than zero such that so we're also gonna have a positive delta such that these two conditions are met right so these two conditions are just fancy ways of showing bounds and by a bound, I mean, it kind of has the restriction on how much the distance between the actual value and the interval of possible values you're going to take in are, right? So here we have the difference between f of x and l. And what that means, if you guys see here on the right, it's going to be represented, we're going to do this in, in blue, the difference between f of x and l is going to be this distance right here or this distance right here and right there we're bounding the y so bounding so we're going to bound the y and there is another way of simplifying the uh, the term error right so epsilon in this case is going to serve for our error so how big we set epsilon to be is how big our error is so that is the reason why we bound the the y value so we can have an error bound so we can say we're going to take this much error into account we're going to take this much error into account so the idea is that if you don't know the formulas and all this stuff that we don't really care about but we still have to think about is if you don't have a formula for some problem you're trying to solve then all you try to do is you try to bound your error and that that's an example of what we do here we just kind of bound the error and then what we do here on the right side is that we have x minus a which is the difference between the x values and the a's. So in this case, we're bounding the error of the of the x's. So here we're bounding, we bound x. All right. So if you guys see here, we can take any x values from here to here. Well, let's say from here to here, we can take any x values in that interval. So how much? we want to take as our difference, our delta 
the bigger the delta, the bigger the interval of errors, I mean, of, of x values that you can input. So that's the idea. So the bigger your delta is, the bigger your bound, I mean, your, your interval is, and the bigger your epsilon is, the bigger your error is, so the, the bigger the interval for the y is. So just a fancy way of kind of talking about how to bound your, your axis. But we, these, these two restrictions here are actually going to become very handy when we actually need to solve the problem. We need to solve these limits, right? So let's just jump into an example so we can see how we can get this done. So here it tells us show that the limit of as x approaches 2 of 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. So what we do is when we I've told you how to do limits, it is just input the number, right? So I feel that's enough. I'm just gonna do 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. So like that's that's enough for me. But no, they don't want you to just input the number. They want you to be all fancy and use all these restrictions and prove the whole idea of this is that you can find a delta. So let's kind of put that like in green or something. That this is our goal. Find fancy looking thing that we're going to call delta. So that is the idea. We're actually going to find delta. And I'll let you guys know how this is in a second. So we're going to write these two like bounds that we have here, the x bound and the y bound, starting with the y bound. So the idea is that we're going to go from the y bound to the x bound. And you guys will see how in a second. We're going to write f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And we're going to write x minus a is between 0 and and delta. So what we're going to do is now we're going to solve the, 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 the y error, I mean the y bounds, which is the error on the left hand side, and then we're going to shift that information onto the right hand side. So let's go ahead here and fill everything in. So f of x, f of x in this case happens to be the function, and we also know that from here, and that's going to be 2x plus 1 minus L and L happens to be here the limit value which is 5 so minus 5 and it's going to be less than epsilon which we just know is a positive value we don't know anything about epsilon we just have it as being a positive value and then we're gonna set up here on the right but we're not gonna solve it we're just gonna set it up so 0 less than x x just x and it's less I mean it's minus a and A is the number that we're trying to approach, and in this case, that is number 2. So, we're going to go ahead and solve the left so we can get to the right. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, here we have that 2x plus 4 minus 5, which simplifies to 2x minus 4 less than epsilon. And what we're going to do now is we are trying to get over here to x minus 2 but I'll show you guys how to get there in a second so now we're going to factor out a 2 from 2x minus 4 and it's going to give us x minus 2 so you guys see how we pulled out that x minus 2 somehow right now we're going to use the properties of absolute value and break this up into two absolute values and that's going to be the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 and that is also going to be less than epsilon, right? So what is the absolute value of 2? That is just 2. Okay? Which leads us to our last step, which we're just going to divide both sides by, by epsilon. I mean, we're going to divide both sides by 2, so it's going to give us epsilon over 2. So we're bounding our error to being epsilon over 2. That's all we care about. We just bounded our y by epsilon over 2. And now, what we need to see is that the hardest part of of this um, manipulation that I would like to call here is getting used to using right here the splitting of the absolute value. So that skill, I would say, is probably the most valuable here in this, in this example 
because that is not a natural thing that we do every day. We don't just like split up absolute values for fun, unless you like to. That's pre that's pretty awesome. I respect that. But I would say it's not very common. Um, so now we're gonna go from here to here, right? And what we need to recognize, right? What we need to recognize is that let's write that in green. We don't have zero. We're just gonna copy what we have here, which is x minus two less than epsilon over two. So if we can see here we have x minus two less than delta, and here we have epsilon I mean x minus two less than epsilon over two. So what we're going to say is that we're just gonna say that delta in this case is equal to epsilon over two. Because you guys see it just matches, it just kinda like goes together. Then now we can bound we can bound this stuff. with epsilon over two. So the idea is that we're, we find a delta that works to bound. That's all we care about. We just care about finding delta. And how do we do that? We do by manipulating here on the left somehow to try to make it fit into the into the into the delta equation, right? So we just know that we're going to bound the air, the air with um, epsilon and then we got to find an epsilon we got to find a delta in terms of epsilon that works for it, right? So we're just gonna kind of follow the systematic way of doing this, where we just solve and um, just kind of get our delta, right? So in this case, when we plugged in, I mean, in this case, uh, the limit as x approaches two, right? Two was defined. So we can say this is an example of of a being defined. So let's write that as maybe in red defined. A. And I'm actually going to go with a baby A. So this is an example where A was defined. And now we're going to look at our next example where A is not defined. And by not defined, I mean that when you plug it in, it gives you an undefined answer, right? So let's do an example two that tells us to show that the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 1 is equal to 3. So we've done some computation of limits already, and you guys know that when th when you plug in the one here, it's going to give you an undefined answer. So we have to manipulate, right? So this this is just not following the whole epsilon delta definition. We're just kind of doing what we know, and we're going to say that we're going to manipulate it. We recognize that we have a polynomial. So since we have a polynomial to manipulate, what do we do? We factor. So we would have x plus 2 x minus 1 over x minus 1 we would cancel and then we'll really be finding the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 2 and then what we do is just plug in the 1 so it gives us 1 plus 2 equal to 3 so the idea here is that if we weren't using the epsilon also definition we would just do this we would just plug it in get an error manipulate it and then somehow just plug it in again right that was the kind of the idea and the pattern that we were in when it came to computing limits but now we have to implement this whole epsilon delta definition which like i said you're going to solve here on the left side for a delta in terms of epsilon right that's our idea we're trying to get a delta in terms of epsilon so let's go ahead and start off by writing our equation our bound equations, which are f of x minus l is less than epsilon, which we're bounding our error. And then here we're going to have that we're bounding the x's from with x minus a with delta, right? So once again, our goal here is to find a delta in terms of epsilon. So let's try to go ahead and do that. So let's start off by putting everything together. So f of x in this case is going to be our function, which is x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 1 minus l. And l is our limit, which is 3. And we're going to have it less than um, epsilon. And then here we're going to have 0, x minus a. And a is going to be that 1 that we have there. And it's going to be less than delta. 
So what we're going to do here is we are going to factor. We're going to factor here. We're going to simplify inside of our, remember that our goal is to simplify inside of our parentheses that we have here, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We always try to simplify inside of here to somehow be able to jump over here. Okay, exactly what we did here in, in the top uh, problem. We had a 2x plus 1 minus 5, and somehow we manipulated it so we can jump to the right equation, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. So by, manip by manipulating, we already know that's a polynomial. So with polynomials, we try to factor. So it's going to be x plus 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 minus 3. less than epsilon. So we're going to be able to cross out this x minus 1's, which I'm going to do in red, x minus 1, x minus 1. Which is going to be x plus 2 minus 3 less than epsilon. Which is then going to give us a plus 2 and a minus 3 give us a minus 1. And hey, we have a winner. Because here we have x minus 1, and here we have x minus 1. So we have reached to make the left equal to the right. So all we're going to do is we're going to bring this thing up here. So we're going to have that x minus 1 is bounded by epsilon. So therefore, when these two already match, we just make these two equal to each other. So in this case, our answer is going to be that delta is equal to epsilon and we are done. We found the delta that works in this case and that's all we care about. And in this case you guys see that the x of um, when you plug in when you plug in 1 is not defined so a in this case was undefined. It was not defined. Let's use the term undefined. Yeah. So this is an example when a is not defined and if you guys remember we're gonna go for a second in the definition it says that it doesn't need to be defined at a right and that is why this definition works because here our function is not defined at a it's it's undefined at a so in this case uh, that doesn't affect the whole epsilon delta definition so we can still compute it so we got through the section it was a little painful annoying I know you guys still probably don't see like a big purpose to this you don't have to and honestly it is touched up for just a second so honestly there isn't really a big purpose of learning this because unless you guys are trying to be mathematicians which if you guys are that's awesome there isn't really a value to this right so let's go ahead and just uh, move on to the next section and I'll see you guys next time